Hi guys, we've got an optimization question here today um, where it's asking that a cylinder is to be machined from a sphere of radius 10 centimeters. Find the maximum volume of a cylinder. So what I've done is I've given you two different pictures. I've given you what um, we're actually finding. So we have a, a cylinder inside a sphere and this sphere has a radius, so here is equal to 10 centimeters. Now, the easier way to think about this, though, is if we have a look at a cross-section of the sphere with the inscribed cylinder. So the inscribed cylinder, if we cut it as a cross-section, it's going to look like a rectangle. So we're going to use this drawing to try and optimize the cylinder volume. So to start with, let's come up with a formula for the volume of a cylinder. So normally we have volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared h. Now that doesn't really help us here because in our um, cross section we have x's and y's. So to make it easier we're going to say that the radius of our cylinder is equal to whatever this x point is here where we find the optimum area. So the radius is going to be equal to x and the height of our cylinder, so we've got our y value here, but the height of our cylinder is the same distance below the x-axis as well. So we're going to say the height of this cylinder is equal to 2y. So let's substitute those two values in and we're going to come up with a objective function or the function that we wish to optimize equal to pi x squared times h which we're going to call 2y. Great. Now we also have a formula which is going to act as a boundary on which our cylinder is able to be optimized inside of. Now, the sphere, we're going to use its cross section again, and we're going to find the, we have, well, we're not going to find, we're going to have the equation for a circle. Now, the equation for a circle is x squared, like I've written here, plus y squared equals r squared. So we know our radius is 10. So this is going to be bounded by the function x squared plus y squared has got to be equal to 100. Great. So now we have these two formulas. We're going to be able to get one formula volume in terms of one variable, so then we can optimize it. So I found the easiest way to do this is we're going to rearrange the uh, function for a circle. And we're going to rearrange it as so. We're going to say x squared is equal to 100 minus y squared. Great. So now we have that. What we can do with that is we can then substitute that in for x squared in the volume function. So if we do that, we're going to have the volume of a cylinder in terms of y equal to pi bracket instead of x squared we're going to write 100 minus y squared times 2y great so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to like simplify this a little bit to make it easier to differentiate so I'm going to multiply the y into the bracket and I'm also going to take the 2 from this one out the front with the pi. Now the reason I'm going to do that will appear obvious in a second. So once we've done that we end up with the function 2 pi bracket 100 y minus y cubed. Cool. 
So what we do then is we're going to differentiate this function with respect to y. So we're going to find a dv dy. It's a bit weird having the y on the bottom there, but that's going to be differentiating this function. And to differentiate this, we're going to keep that 2 pi at the front. And we're going to have inside the bracket 100 minus 3y squared. Now, I'm assuming that you guys are up to date or you are fully aware of like the, the actual process which is involved in differentiating. So I'm not going to explain that right now. If you need to figure that out, have a look at one of my other videos. Now, this, is func this differential will show a maximum volume at, well, when the differential equals zero. That's a, the turning point of our function. So we're going to set this derivative to zero. What I'm then going to do is I'm just going to solve it for y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. And obviously the 2 pi cancels. 0 divided by 2 pi is still 0. And we're left with 100 minus 3y squared. Great. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the 3y squared over to the other side to make it a positive. I'm then going to take the 3 back and I'm going to square root both sides. So just in an attempt to save space, I'm going to just finalize this. We're going to have y is equal to the square root of 100 over 3. So what we've actually just found there, this is the um, value of y that gives a maximum volume. Cool. So basically what we then have to do is we're just going to define the maximum volume. We're going to substitute the square root of 100 over 3 back into our volume in terms of y formula. And that will give us what, well, what our volume is. So let's do that. Let's go from here and we're going to go up to here. So what I'm going to do, I'll change color. I'm going to have volume, and I'm going to have this is going to be y is equal to 100 over the square root of oh, square root of 100 over 3. Sorry. So I'm going to put into this function. We're going to be that's going to be equal to pi times 100 minus the square root of 100 over 3 squared is equal to just 100 over 3 times by 2 times the square root of 100 over 3. And what we find is if you put that into your calculator or you can solve it by hand, whichever floats your boat, you're going to get a maximum volume, so V max is equal to 2,418.4. Now this is centimeters, so this is going to be centimeters cubed. And there is our solution. So it's not a touch. It's not a difficult problem per se. The steps aren't difficult and the algebra isn't difficult, but it's just getting a grip on like going through the motions. So if you're in an exam situation, you know exactly what to do because this question might be worth a few marks. So it's a good opportunity to catch up on some, um, you know, catch up for some time so you can spend more time on di more difficult problems during an exam. So I hope this helped.
and I'll uh, see you again next time.